Hi all. Uh, in this video, uh, we will be going over the intro to waves. The learning goals and objectives for this section is to know and recognize the wave equation, both general solutions and two specific solutions. Know that the, there is a relationship between the velocity of a wave and its frequency and wavelength. Also know other common wave velocity relations. The third is to understand what it means to oscillate in both space and time. <clears throat> so for starters, the wave equation is first going to write it down, then we're going to explain it. So, as has much been the theme in physics 170, 171, we have a differential equation that governs the physics of, this, of the situation under investigation, and we don't actually expect you to solve it. What we expect you to do is, when we guess the solution, for you to uh, imp put it into this differential equation and show that it does end up equaling zero, thereby proving that it is a solution. Guessing is a perfectly acceptable way to solve a differential equation. So what y is, is y is the amplitude of a wave as it travels through both uh, a linear dimension, so a spatial dimension, x, and a temporal dimension, time. Um, so as I said, you use this equation to verify that your guess solution is in fact a, a solution. And as you saw in notes, some generalized solutions are f of x minus vt. This is a forward traveling wave. So f for forward, and it's x minus vt. So as it moves forward in time, um, this minus vt keeps moving it over. So the way I like to think about this is, say we had a function that is g of x equal to x squared, then if we had g of x minus 3, then that would be equal uh, to this. So moving the parabola over, so the zero is now at three. So that's what the minus vt for, and we also can have a backward traveling wave, so it's going to have a plus vt backward. So this is the wave equation that you use to verify that something is a solution. So what you do is you get a, an f or b, and you do the differential, so you take it the derivative of twice with respect to position, take the derivative of twice with respect to time, you multiply one by one over the velocity squared, and if it equals zero, it's a solution. So at this point, you probably want to know what uh, f of x minus vt is, rather than it being some just abstraction that you now it's saying, oh, you know, there is a solution. You actually want to know what it looks like. You want to have some putty to play with. So one thing that we have written commonly is x minus vt plus v, or mm, a cosine kx minus omega t plus v. So uh, we need two um, free parameters because it, uh, it's a second order differential equation. That's what the phi and the amplitude a are for. And if you also notice uh, something special we did was we factored in this k and what we did is we defined um, that k times v equals omega. 
or you could say that v equals omega over k. So omega has units of 2 pi radians, or let's just let's go with uh, radians. So omega has units of radians per second. How do I know that? You multiply omega times time, the argument of a cosine has to be in radians, so seconds times radians per second should give you radians. Then over here we have position, so position times k gives us radians, so this has to be in units of radians per meter, and this ends up being meters per second, so it is a velocity, which is fantastic. So this is something, this is a solution that is useful for traveling waves. So if we were going to do something like have a wave come in and incident a boundary, this would be something that's very useful. Now for standing waves, I recommend this solution, which is f of x minus vt um, being equal to a cosine, this is a different a, kx plus b sine kx, all of that times a cosine of omega t. And in a future video, you'll see why this is uh, nice, but for standing waves, what we can do is say that uh, since what really defines a standing wave is the boundary conditions, and the boundary conditions happen in position, um, waves are either f of x0 equal to 0 or df of x of 0 equal to 0. So for either of these cases, the above simplifies to f of x equals a cosine k of x plus b sine k of x because you don't care about the time dependence for a standing wave. A standing wave just lets it oscillate in time. All right, so we've gone over two solutions. We've made a useful definition. Now let's go over uh, what it means to oscillate in space. So imagine I have my y of x of t here. And then I can draw much better than that. That's hideous. Okay, so this is x, and then this is going to be minus eh, it's the minus side. But so what we can do is we can draw in. wave as such and then to help the analogy that I want and draw a little boat maybe even a little person there riding the wave cute little fellow all right, so this looks like a wave. It's got oscillatory behavior, but this is like a painting, a painting of a wave. So as you move, why does that keep happening? As you move over in the x direction, you're going to go up, down, and back, up, down, and back. Um, 
so what we can do is we can say that from this point up, down, and then back to over here, the width of length lambda. And we remember that uh, lambda equals to 2 pi over k, which is the same k that we were talking about previously. So this is something that oscillates in position, but does not oscillate in time. So the painting doesn't change as a function of time. It just changes as a function of position. Now, if we have our amplitude again, and this is time, this is y of x comma t, and our little boat is uh, fixed, so it's got, uh, say, an anchor, but it's allowed to jump up and down. So as a wave comes in, the boat will go up and down, but it's equilibrium position, but since it's anchored, and that would, should have been much better drawn. Since it's anchored, the boat doesn't move, in, doesn't move in the x direction. It does move up and down in the y direction. And what we can do is we can define this quantity right here as the period of oscillation. And the period is the time that it takes to do one full oscillation. That's equal to 1 over the frequency. And then the frequency is equal to the omega you saw previously divided by 2 pi. Or, as I usually remember, omega equals 2 pi times the frequency. So if you want, frequency is in units of um, hertz. So it's 1 over time. And then omega has units of radians per time, so you multiply by 2 pi radians to get into an omega. So if we put these together, we'll remember that v equals omega over k. And if we put in what we already know, so omega equals 2 pi times f, and k equals 2 pi times what? Two, 2 pi over lambda. 2 pi's cancel, and we're just left with wavelength times the frequency. So in a given medium, the frequency, uh, in a given medium, the velocity is fixed, and then the wave, uh, wavelength times the frequency is fixed. So if the wavelength goes up, the frequency has to go down because the velocity is fixed. All right, thank you very much.